Before we get into the video, we're gonna check out Beetle and Grimm's first collectible Magic the Gathering product, Kamigawa Platinum Edition, starring this little plush tanuki. I'm the one in best of one. What's that? <gasps> I'm the one in best of one? Exclusive Neon Dynasty backpack. Lots of straps, lots of space, lots of padding. Special edition binder. Gonna fill it up with foils. Ao and Junji sleeves. Oh, this is the hard vault. I think I'll carry everything in this. Demon themed lightning blue deck box. Thousand face shadow LED play mat. Oh, it's so shiny. Kamigawa themed neon pink deck box. Very cool. A life counter. Life total is right here and you just kind of spin it. Special counters. Counters for reach, indestructible, vigilance, trample, march of otherworldly light poster. Favorite dragons. Junji. Ayo. Yuri, does anybody know your name? Atushi. I think I could live out of this backpack for months. You get all this and more in the Kamigawa Platinum Edition from Beatles and Grimm. You can find it on their website at beetlesandgrimms.com. Oh, well, what's that? You want to go back to the video? Back to the video. Hello and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me at CGB today in the arena. What has become of Esper? A proud... Proud, proud color combination with years of taking control of the opponent under their belt has been reduced to a new white aggro pile. I I love it about as much as you guys do. But it's not my job always to bring you the absolute finest in control silliness when it's not the best thing we can do it. Sometimes I have to bring you what I think is the best deck, the best way to play the powerful decks in the format. And... I mean, I'm telling you, I think Esper in this set is designed to lean a certain way, and I think that way is the way of the aggro mage, and I'll explain exactly why. We are still on the early access account provided by Wizards of the Coast, hashtag sponsored. So I have access to these cards until the clock turns midnight, or actually 8 a.m., I think it is my time. And then uh, this whole account turns into a pumpkin. And while I'm on the account, I battle other streamers in what they call the early access event for Streets of New Cabana. Yes, they got rid of it. They brought it back with very little warning. So I'm very sleepy. This is the third video I've recorded after doing a stream, after uh, just getting home on what was supposed to be my break day. But they announced this was happening, and here we are. So what's going on? Esper Flash, Esper Aggro, whatever you want to call the Obscura. It's get in, get them dead. We've done two videos now on this account with Obnixilis. And it often also features Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Yesterday's featured Asika's Chariot. Invoke Despair was in both decks. I don't think this is going anywhere. Meat Hook Massacre. These are the powerful cards that we have to fear. And there's one great answer that absolutely solves all these things that I've been able to find. And I, I hate it, but it's true. It's Thalia, the Guardian of Thraben. Non-creature spells cost one more to cast. That's the solution I found. And uh, it is what it is at this point. So we're playing, basically it's mono-white aggro, and in the spirit of the Naya version that splashed Halana and Elena in the last format, we're splashing Rafine Scheming Seer and Obscura Interceptor. And what's amazing about this is we get spell-like effects on creatures in the Esper color combination that get around Thalia. So Rafine Scheming Seer is a white, a blue, and a black for the boss, the Sphinx Demon, 1-4, Flying Ward 1. The Ward 1 is a pain in the butt, let me tell you. And whenever you attack, target attacking creature connives X, where X is the number of attacking creatures. And that conniving thing gets out of control, because whenever you connive, you draw a card. If you discard a non-land card, you put a plus one, plus one counter on Rafine, the Scheming Seer, and it's... It gets pretty wild pretty fast, where you're piling counters onto things. If you play Rafine on turn 3 following a Thalia, or a Hopeful Initiate, or a Luminarch, you're hitting for a lot of damage really quick, because note it says when you attack, target attacking creature. Rafine doesn't have to attack. This has an impact the turn it comes down, kind of like another Luminarch Aspirant. <laughs> God, they're trying to make every card into Luminarch Aspirant now. The other key card here is Obscura Interceptor. This is one, a white, a blue, and a black for a 3-1 flash lifelink. When it enters the battlefield, it connives. When it connives, return up to one target spell to its owner's hand. So when they go for that meat hook, when they tap out to finally cast that expensive card they haven't been able to cast because of Thalia and Elite Spellbinder, what do you give them? 
you intercept it and you send it right back to their hand and you added a 3-1 body, possibly a 4-2 body with lifelink to swing in and deal more damage next turn. What do these flash cards play well with? Brutal Cathar. So we have four copies of Brutal Cathar because being able to flip it is freaking cool. We still have two Wandering Emperors because the card is far from bad and it adds another flash threat in our five drop spot. And we have Adeline because this card is still a house. I'm running Sun Gold Sentinel. A little bit of graveyard hate seems to go a long way right now. Um, if you watch the last few videos, you know that there are reanimator players out here. People are really into some kind of reanimation nonsense. So I'm running Sun Gold Sentinel. This possibly should be adversary. Like, I wouldn't blame you one bit if you ran adversary in this spot. It's a, it's a, like, Intrepid Adversary in this spot is completely acceptable. And maybe that is actually what I should be playing, especially since putting the counters on is so good. But I'm avoiding one toughness creatures as well. Um, that also seems to be a problem. The spike field hazards, the shambling ghasts, etc, etc. Um, Meat Hook Massacre. You just want higher toughness, and Rafine's really good at, like, really raising toughness fast. So, it's another good two drop to go with Rafine. It's not the way I wanted Esper to be, guys. It really isn't, I promise you. This wasn't what I had in mind when I was thinking Esper, but I would like winning a lot, and I really like running over everybody playing Obnixilus and Chariot right now, so that's what we're gonna do. Let's dive in, let this nonsense begin. Aggressive white stuff. I mean, we're on the draw, but we have the Thalia Rafine, maybe Wandering Emperor, depending what happens to Thalia. We don't have black, though. Let's see what happens. Lots of ways to draw into this being good. It's also early access, so I keep any hand that's remotely close to playable. Turn to Thalia is the best thing I can find so far for battling Ob and Chariot and Fable of the Mirror Breaker, but that is not the draw we want to see. Could be the worst draw in the deck if we don't stop deck of Black Source. Our opponent running same deck, running Angels, the Font of Hope. Hmm. This makes angel spells cost less? Makes me wonder if maybe we're supposed to play Luminarch here. Let's get it going. Angels looks like a cool deck. Yep, they've got Youthful. Comes in as a 2-4. Another Thalia. His hand is going very badly for us. I guess I'll play this Thalia and start putting counters on it. Ooh, they're going to charm Thalia to death. Okay. And get aggressive. There's a tower, so next turn we can have Rafine online. We can also play Wandering Emperor here. But I think what we do, since they killed the Thalia, is just play another one. We still don't have removal. It's not like we would play a lot anyway. But maybe this was bothering them in some way. Maybe they can't play their Fear is Retribution. Since this mana can only cast Angel spells. Although now they definitely have enough. Down to 10. It's getting scary. Very scary. Ooh. We make white. We play Valk. God, 4-6. Are you freaking kidding me right now? Well, we got destroyed. See, we can get this up to a five, I guess. It's not even very good. Nothing we do here is good. Unless the opponent has no more angels, right? Okay, think about it, think about it. We have two legendaries, so we can use this and play this. That's a big deal. So how best to do it? We want to connive, right? We want to keep attacking, so we go bounce. We put a counter here. 
because we need that thing to get larger. We attack here. We have to target an attacking creature. We'll target Thalia. We'll draw two. We need to have flyers. We're kind of doing it. Although I'm not sure how it's all going to work out well. I guess we need a lot of counters to make this thing big enough that they can't attack through it easily. So we'll discard these two. Thalia will hit really hard. The opponent falls to 10. Ten's not much. We're both on ten. Okay, the opponent's got the retribution. That's not good. Every angel will gain the ability to tap to kill stuff next turn. But I've got this two five that can take on any attack they have, so we're not dead yet. I can get both of these to five, so if they block badly, the wandering emperor can come in and kill something. Do we attack with everything, though? I don't think so. We need defense. Ooh. Now remember, we have to draw this card non-lands to get the damage that we need, so I guess it's these. But as far as drawing lands, those were good ones. Went with some double blocks here. How do we... Sp I think we take out the big angel? Anyone who harms my people it's too bad we can't kill both. Remember your training. So now the Fuhrer's Retribution is very dangerous, but the opponent, in order to use it, they have to tap this, which means they can't attack with it, and they would have to target Rafine. They'd have to pay the one, which... I don't know if they care very much about that, but they are at 10, so they're in trouble. Ooh, come on, did they have to draw that? Talk about the perfect draw. Talk about absolute perfection from the opponent. Huh? Eh? The Rafine has ward. So they're thinking about what to tap to kill with this. And they choose the Luminarch, which is a perfectly acceptable choice. Let's be real. Okay, so Wandering Emperor can kill this. Brutal Cathar, one of the better draws we could have. Which one's the Mimic? This one is. It's got the seven instead of the six, so that's good. Give me that. Attack with both, connive twice. What you got? <laughs> do they block? They do. Okay. Oh my goodness. That's gonna work. We took out both Valks. We minus to kill this Valk. All they've got left is this double striking Gilda. She's all by herself now. All by herself. Opponent's like, how did this happen? I don't know. I don't know how this happened. Abandoned Mire. Mill three, get... Valkyrie, I'm sure. Seems good. But is it good enough now? Opponent can take out Wandering Emperor with Vigilance. That seems pretty... Yeah, we're doing it. Until next time, then. Alright, power up. Check out this conniving. Oh my goodness. Opponent can block and kill it, though, with Valkyrie. Maybe I should have thought about that, but they also have to stay alive. Oh, no. I needed another non-land there. I shouldn't have kept the Cathar. 
Oh, I guess they feel they have to make this block? Or they die? Yeah. Wow. They go to one. If they block the... If they chump with Gilda there, I think they can kill this, get back the glass pool mimic, copy the Valkyrie, and be in this. All right, this comes down on the night side, though. Let's get him. Finish the job. Oops. My headphone was doing something weird. Forgive me. Make it be huge! Oh my gosh, that cave is ripped! The Fiend's a good card, guys. The good card. John likes games, huh? Fellow D-Gen streamer. John likes games from Team Degenerate Gaming. All right, we're on the play. And we've got our best one drop, Rafine's Tower. <laughs> Followed closely by Hopeful Initiate. It is the reason we only have four one drops. If I forgot to mention that in the intro, uh, Rafine's Tower is the reason. Because we need to go tap land on turn one sometimes to make sure that we Rafine properly. Tower on tower. Let's see what kind of Esper this opponent is playing. It must be in the hour of the day where people are giving up on Ob and trying things like Esper because this is second Esper deck in a row. Get him. Let's connive. I think I'm still discarding a land here. Kind of sad because it doesn't give a plus one plus one counter, but it does help us get us through our lands to more live spells. All right, you play Ravine. Interesting. Let's set up for Wandering Emperor and get in there. The target here, so both creatures go to a third power. Um, submit zero, that's our graveyard. You, and you, I guess. So we get the power where we need it to go. We've got a three six here. The opponent with the block. So we could let this block happen and then hold the interceptor and then use the emperor next turn. It's not like we're losing anything here, so I think we do this. My goodness, once you get ahead, whether it's Obnixilis or with this Rafine, like it feels like they can't catch up. All right, they're saying go. They probably have the emperor here. We'll see if they play it while we're tapped out or not. Void Ren? You're gonna pay one? Yep. Okay. Well, it's one for one removal in a spot where one for one removal isn't great. So we're gonna put a counter here. Do we want to put two counters here? Okay. Just thinking, just thinking. Talking. Still got the Interceptor to stop their next cool play. Play this tapped. Plus... Do we want it on the Vigilant Threat? Either way, we can get three damage through, or we can get four damage through by putting it on the other. So I guess we want four. Let's go on the Sentinel. Vigilance doesn't matter very much right now because this flies. Reservoir Kraken, back to your hand with that. Rude card. Um, yeah, let's go for the 4-2 so this can attack well. And that kind of a tempo hit is hard to take. Arc Priest. Interesting. I wonder how they assemble a party. Rafine decides to pressure the Wandering Emperor. This isn't going to go how you think. Plus one here. Ask Pirate. Strike fast and strike hard. Counter here, I guess. Does it matter? Destroy that. Coming in hot.
I'm gonna set up my land so we can power up cave next turn. Might be helpful to hit lethal. Especially if the opponent casts a farewell. They got a Kraken. <clears throat> They've got an Aspirant. Why not? Rafine's got a counter. Decline. Draw. Brutal Cathar. Yes, I'm sure. I would love to pay. Why not? <laughs> Show them how we greet our enemies. Everybody in. Slice and dice. I speculated when looking at Rafine during spoiler season that it would be hard to kill. I can tell you, nobody has the tools to kill it yet. Nobody came prepared. Rafine too strong on the play. No Rafine, but a very aggressive hand. Thalia elite if the opponent's on control. Luminarch elite if they're not. Rafine? All right, we Thalia. All right, we don't have black mana, so we don't want to draw Rafine or Interceptor yet. What you got? Okay, so they have Rafine and they have the mana to cast Rafine, which is frustrating, but I guess with everything else being taxed, we'll just take this and make it cost a lot more. They can't stop us from using Iganjo, Seed of the Empire, and that's probably gonna be our best weapon for a while to keep the pressure on. Their Infernal Grass makes them pay two life. Very tempo negative. Let's see what they do. It's elite. Take my Aspirant. Counter their Aspirant. Ooh, another Elite. I think we play out our Aspirant. Since it lets Thalia continue to get through. They might be thinking Encep, Thalia, unlock their Wandering Emperor, but Elite really messes that up. Oh. Wow. Okay. They know about a Ganjo, so they have to attack here? They don't? Strange. This is pretty tilting. Still can't block this. They are a turn from Wandering Emperor, so I think we go ahead and play out our elite. Kaito? Don't care. Kaito not as good on the draw, that's for sure. Yep. If you're going to play decks full of cards that get taxed by Thalia, time to bring back Ray of Enfeeblement and Spike Field Hazard, I guess. You gotta, you gotta be able to kill her cheap. Nobody here is ready for that. Ooh, if we draw a blue source, Thalia into Rafine, so mean. The rain is lightly falling here in Kamigawa. Ooh. Okay. Frustrating to see the shambling ghast really makes me change my plans. But come on, blue source. One time. Hey! Okay, so how big does this get? If we play Rafine... Four? They can deal three? Awesome. So awesome. But we do have to make sure that we don't discard a land, which is fine. We have two Thalias. So easy choice. A 
opponent can definitely chump here. Man, I really do need to get this Thalia down. They don't chump. Ow. Maybe I should have put the Thalia down. I was so worried about anything that sacrifices the Shambling Gas or kills it, killing the Thalia. Okay. What you got? Well, do I get to attack here? Vicious. All right, let's connive. Oof. All right, three cards. One, two, three? Really? Really? Think so. Make it strong. Ripped Luminarch. Man, that is good with Adeline. Too bad this isn't White Source. Could have been Ganjo'd here. <laughs> Which is insane. But we do have two legendaries, so it only costs one mana to Ganjo. The opponent's like, what the F? How do I, how do I, huh? Yeah, your meat hook is gonna have a ways to go. Spiders. I mean, they can jump. <laughs> Jumping's a thing. I guess we'll try to make them work to kill Adeline. <laughs> Are you kidding right now? Are you kidding right now? There's so much. Two. No, where are you going? <laughs> Holy crap. So what do we even keep there? I think maybe it's time to discard Dahlia because the rest of our turn we want to be like one hopeful initiate and then hold up interceptor. But maybe we discard initiate with the plan being to a ganjo because whatever good block the opponent comes up with. Yeah, we probably want to ganjo it to blow it up because they'll double block something. So, uh, yeah, I'm probably discarding the tower, the tower, the sanctum, and the initiate. Okay. Good to work on that stuff. Good to work this stuff out. Professor Rakdos. Well, I wonder if you're going to be playing Omnixilis. We're on the play. We don't have a two drop. I'll keep it just because the mana's good. And if we draw a two drop, it's amazing. So, give ourselves one chance here to rip the two. We do not rip the two. Go ahead and show me the tenacious underdog, or the innkeeper, whatever. Chariot is ready. Let's go ahead and drop this, make them have the answer to it at least. Oh, tap land. Double innkeeper, okay. What are you doing with those treasures over there? Doing anything cool? Huh? Got anything cool for those treasures? What you got? Nothing? Ravine! Do we go for that? Okay. Seems really good. I mean, it's really good, right? I guess Thalia can go here. A little 5 6. No big deal. Do we hold these lands? I think I'm supposed to play at least one. So, Chariot or. 
<laughs> My Adeline's gonna be like <laughs> 10 power next turn. Okay. Ooh, they can make something huge with Kalein. Let's see what they've got. Does it die to Brutal Cathar? Okay. They 5 4 harvestered. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if Adeline cares. Adeline might not have any foxes to give. They might have removal open for the Cathar, though, but they might be planning to use it in a different way. So, let's go for it. Maybe they'll remove this. Okay. I guess they're really planning to remove the Adeline. We'll give them all kinds of things to think about respecting. I mean, we're definitely going here. Because I think Adeline's gotta die. See? Three knives. I guess next turn we really wanted to use uh, Obscura, Interceptor, and something. What's better, though? I think we uh, just go for max damage here and discard Wandering Emperor, hold Obscura, Interceptor, and Seed of a Ganjo. And try to get this airborne clock bigger than a dragon, stronger than a dragon, faster than a dragon. All right, we'll see what the opponent plays this sequence. It has to be really good. Tap land. They held out to the last possible second last time to use the Grasp, so I'm hoping they do it again with whatever spell they go for against the Warded Rafine. Okay. They can't kill Rafine because of Ward. They binding away the Priest. They get a Harvester. Okay. Can't use it yet. Another Rafine. It's fine. Oops. Oh, I guess we're going here. That was an accident. <laughs> One, two, three. It's a deal. Could have used the Aganjo there, but instead, I'm gonna play this, we're gonna play this, and we're gonna hold this open, and that should be good enough to kill him. Esper Tempo, man. <laughs> Basically white aggro that locks you out of the game on turn three and four. Just, you have no, you have no path back once you're under an interceptor and four open mana and you're behind on board. Back in your hand. Try again. All right, on the play. Just looks like good old white aggro. Nothing to see here. Thalia? Hmm. But it might be runes. What's the right play? A lot of good options. I think we'll tax them. On the draw, hard to go too wrong with taxes. Who knows, could draw a fiend. Could have a huge Thalia in a couple turns. I hope you didn't build your ban 
deck with spells in mind, or you'll be in trouble. <laughs> Let's add a line them. Right now they don't have a good block. Being behind to add a line because of Thalia is really painful. Two swarm shamblers. What do you think they're up to? I'm trying to think. They must have that um, mythic that it's the it's the boss. I forget the name. It's like a bird. The broker's bird boss that lets you remove counters to cast spells. Well, that's that's a pretty funny draw. Sure, who wants to who wants to hit the hardest? I guess I'll just go with this token. Discard four cards. Um, I mean, I guess I'm actually discarding my way through all these lands I don't need, huh? <laughs> That's a lot of land for a white aggro deck. But we are jamming for an insane amount of damage. All right, bring out Falcor or whatever its name is. Let's do this. <laughs> I think I can get him to chump block. Two mana snakeskin veil. Dude. Well, let me see your hand. I want to see your hand. I want to see your hand. I want to see your deck. What, what were you up to? Oh, there it is. That was Falcor boy. Or girl, I don't even know. Broker's Ascendancies, which put counters on things. Quandrix Commands can put counters on things. But this thing is obviously the, the crown jewel because it lets you use the counters to cast spells from the top of your library. Maybe we'll try to find a deck that we can build with it. Honestly, it'll look a lot like this, but instead of Rafine, it'll have uh, Falco Spara here, the Pact Weaver. Because white creatures are really good. I don't know if you know this. White creatures are impressively good. Dude, could be the exact same deck. Take out the Rafines. Take out the Interceptors, add four Falcos, add four... We could add Broker's Ascendancy, which would be a pretty epic anthem, but maybe I'll just run Broker's Charm or something like that. Or I'll run the uh, Broker Critter that draws a card when one power creatures attack. Am I getting salty roped in early access? <laughs> this is what I've become. Maybe I'd... Some are going to say I deserve it for playing the Elite Spellbinder. I wanted to see what their deck did. I want to see if I was right. Wow. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Boom. Rawr! Mega Sphinx! <laughs> Alright, we go first. We got the best one drop. <laughs> I'd still prefer Hopeful Initiate. I don't think we've started a single game on Hopeful Initiate, and it still hasn't been close. Alright, they played their own tower. This hits for three, this hits for three as well. Let's go straight to the Aspirants. Maybe I'm supposed to lead on Sentinel there because Aspirant, like, can add power to the battlefield to attack later. We'll see. We will see. Snap, kill it. Rip. Aww. We were ready to go. 
Ward 1. Vanishing Verse won't work on that. Neither will Power Word kill. Is a demon. I just, I just don't play cards that kill this card. All right. We could play Adeline here and get two counters, but one token would just run into its death. Let's go ahead, play Thalia. Go ahead, play Luminarch. Counter. Attack. Denive. Pump. 3-6. Get it going. Get it going. Opponents tax out of playing their Saga, if they have it. Righteous Valkyrie. Card is a, is a tough one. Whoa. Okay. That's a really good opening for the opponent. Um, I guess we're going to put more counters on the Thalia, because we can get it up to a 5. And then this is a 6, so they could double block it. I guess if we play Adeline, it can get it up to a 7. Counter here. Oh, counter here. 7. Can't kill it. Then 1, 2, 3 non-lands here, and this gets through. In theory. We have to draw the right spell. We have to draw spells, though. That's scary. Six, seven. Hit! <laughs> Too many lands. How many legendaries do we have? We have three? Ooh, this works. Ooh. I need this, too. Discard three cards. One, two, three. Okay. So let them declare their block. If I bounce their Valkyrie, they just play it again and gain five. That's pretty rough. Oh, the double! You cheeky bugger. I'll just bounce the Thalia. But we'll see. We might lose now. They could definitely now play the um, Fear's Retribution, right? Just absolutely smash us with it. Oh God, Mimic. Just stop with that thing. Too much Valkyrie. This Angel's deck might be good. I worry about it just on the draw against Ob, bad things happening, but it might be really good. Let's see if they find the attacks. Yes, turn them sideways. Good choice. Alright, so these are on the ground. We need to target here. One, two. Attack with both of these. We can connive. Play the Brutal Cathar. Alright, we need to do this first. Take you out. The counter is here, and the connive is here. Do you think they can get three more damage on me? They definitely can, right? So, yeah. Okay. Guess it's like this. We want to replay that Thalia and get something on the board this turn. Let's go to 19. I don't think we have a shot this time. I think it's Revenge of the Angels here. Vala. 6-6! Six, six. It comes in so hot! Because of the guild? Oh my god, gains so much life. <laughs> that is messed up. How close are we to a party? Two cart. There are two partiers. <laughs> Good god. They're thinking about throwing away this uh, Giada Font of Hope to get me down to a really low life. Oh, they didn't attack at all. That's weird. That's very weird. So... We need to get something at least up to a 7 to attack with it. And we can attack with a lot of things, so we can connive for a lot. 
<laughs> but I don't think that's enough. I guess we just connive this token, but I guess we like our card. So we just do this. Do they have lethal? We can block here. We have to chump here. Take nine. Yeah, I guess they have lethal, huh? That didn't solve it, but we'll see. Maybe they'll be afraid to go for it. Yeah, take it. I mean, if they have one more angel, they get to flip these. Yeah, if I, if I block six here, I still lose. So let them pay. So they still have the lethal attack, we just have to make sure that they actually see it. Ta-da! Giga Brain. Angel's Revenge. I have played this person multiple times and I have no idea what they're playing. It's how much I pay attention. They, of course, have us fully stocked account like I do, so they can switch and play all kinds of stuff. I look like pretty traditional mono-white aggro right now. Mardu? Okay. Underdoggo? Ah, we're gonna just gonna take that off the board. We could also um, attack and see if they trade, which they probably do. I think they do. So yeah, we'll just take that off the board. Get to work. Too bad we can't get a Thalia down. We drew it a turn late, so now they can play their Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Okay, Ghast. Strangle, gross. That's really good. Alright, let's drop an Elite here. Two Omnixilus. <laughs> of course there's two Omnixilus. Well, we had the right card to fight him, but we just didn't get down on curve. Shows you how important it is to draw your cards on curve, huh? Now we have to try to beat the God Draw. The unbeatable. <laughs> Shake down the locals. Defy me, and you'll lose everything. Oh, wow. That's bold. And kind of bizarre. Ooh! What have we here? Which one's the copy? That's the copy. Big, too big for a devil. If we discard a... Oh man, that kind of sucks. But I think it's right. Yeah, they're hanging on to their devils. Discarding non-land, sometimes hard. But Thalia here keeps the hook away. Go yeah, life total declining. Declining fast. By coin or carnage, tribute is owed. Are you gonna play another ob? <laughs> they could. Oh my god! <laughs> they could stop. I guess they'll have another devil. Four obs. They have to get rid of one. They get two more triggers this turn alone. My goons will make quick work of you. Okay. 
and you lose everything. Backup Thalia is whatever. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, one. You here, you here, you here. Attack, connive here, exile here. Discard one, two, three. Power up, channel, no devil. Destroy what I Obs are dead! <laughs> Not worth Do we hold this back? Do we hold this back? No. They have a den of the bugbear. <laughs> they might just try to kill me here. They're still at 21 after all. Oops. They don't have enough red mana for that. <laughs> wow. Good game. Let's do this. Put a counter here. Power up. Exile. All of it gone. To make a 2-2. Two -two. Down to 10. Like I said, we found uh, we found a deck that can overcome the ob problem. Elspeth, holy crap! That better be an impressive minus three. Is the idea that you can hit ob with it? I'll be your shield. You don't get the casualty if you do that. I think that's pretty rough. Fable, sure. <laughs> Shield counter. Never mind. All in. All on the cave. Let's go! Conniving, baby. So strong. And we are back for the post-game wrap. Uh, the Angel deck got its revenge. I feel like there might have been another loss in there. Again, stats don't seem to be working for the early access account because I have to play it on a different client. But um, you guys buy in? Is this the way Esper was meant to be? It's white aggro, but more so. I mean, is Rafine not just kind of insane? Like when you're conniving and looking at three, four, five cards, getting so deep, looking exactly for the card that you need. Interceptor, just locking the opponent out of the game with a body end, kind of a one turn time walk type effect. It's gross. Like it's absolutely gross. I found this deck to be completely bizarrely deceptively destructive and i think that if you happen to open some rafines or if this looks like your jam you want to play mono white with a little more flavor you can definitely add rafine and have a very good aggro deck so as kind of as much as i feel like a disgrace to the espers i feel like this is where we're supposed to be so i hope that you enjoyed it the smashings and the bashings even got salty roped in a streamer event I feel like it's an achievement I unlocked. Yes, true villain mode has been activated. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I will see you in the next video. You're cool.